Hey, what's going on everybody? This is an in-person video, conceptualized concepts and stuff. Now I wanted to do some of these in-person videos earlier on in this series, but circumstances did not allow it. Also known as I didn't feel like it and here I am to redeem myself. <laughs> so what are we gonna be talking about? We're gonna be talking about loops. Yeah, nothing too crazy. Wait, first you need to check out our sponsor, Dev Mountain. Dev Mountain offers classes in JavaScript based web development as well as user experience and software testing. They have a lot of great classes that are in person, but they also offer classes online. It's a really great way to jumpstart your career. It's a really career oriented bootcamp. So they're going to give you what you need to succeed in the industry and help you get a job in web development. So check them out guys. I'll leave a link in the description. Let them know I sent you their way and they'll give you $250 off. Woo. All right guys, now let's get back to loops. So there's a few types of loops you should know about but they're all essentially built off of the same principles. And those principles consist of three things. So the first, by the way, I remember it with this acronym, ICU. We have an initialization. So this is where we set some variable equal to some value. So we have the initialization, then we have a condition. It's usually a comparison, but basically this is where we compare that original variable to some other value. Then we have an update. And this is where we change the original variable, usually to get closer to that condition to where it's no longer true and we stop. So yeah, a bunch of conceptual words and garbage that aren't that important until we go through an example. So let's talk about a while loop. The way this works is we're gonna start with a variable. Let's just call it i and we'll set that equal to zero. This is a convention. I is typically used for loops. The variable is just known as an iterator or iterator. No, I'm just kidding, but I'm just gonna call it I and that's pretty common. So you're gonna see I a lot. And we're going to initialize it to zero. So that's step one. Then we have a condition. So we do something like this. While, and then in parentheses, we put some kind of expression that's going to either evaluate to true or false. So basically the code is only going to execute on certain conditions. Cool, so we can do something like while i is less than 10. Then we use curly braces to make a code block. And in here we put our code. So this is what we want to do numerous times. So this is going to keep happening, this code block right here. But at the end of the code block, we need to update that variable because if there's no change, it's just gonna be a loop that runs on forever, which we don't wanna do. So what we need to do is we usually do something like i++. So that's going to increase i to one after the first iteration. Iteration is the word to describe one time through the loop. So the first iteration, at the end of it, i is gonna be increased to one, and then that comparison is gonna happen again and then it's gonna go through the code, i is gonna be increased to two, then that comparison, <laughs> then the code, and then three, and it's gonna keep doing that. So this is the syntax to create a loop that's going to execute 10 times. And the thing we want to execute 10 times is in this code right here. So whatever we put here in this code section, we just have it as a comment right now, this is what's going to execute 10 times. You should also know someone's mowing, they always decide to mow, when I'm in the, bit, in the middle of something pretty important. So if you hear that, I apologize. <laughs> so we can actually access this i variable inside of this code. It's just a variable like any other variable. So this means we can use loops to do things like count. For example, if we output i, it's going to basically show the value of i each iteration and put that out on the console. There's lots of things we can do inside of this code area. We can access arrays and all kinds of fun stuff what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be going over some examples of these loops. First video, next video, we're gonna just go through the syntax. There's while loops, for loops, and do while loops. And then the video after that, we're going to basically go through some examples of what you can use loops for. So some hands-on practical purposes for these loops. So pretty fun stuff. Fun stuff. <laughs> pretty fun stuff. So this is a while loop. There's also a for loop which does essentially the same thing, it's just structured a little bit differently. And basically it's going to take all three of these pieces and put it inside of a giant parentheses. <laughs> so it'll look something like this. Four, and then we have the initialization, so we say something like i equals zero, 
Then we have the condition, we can say i is less than 10, and we put semicolons between these, and then we have the update i++. Then we have our code block, and we put our code here. We don't have to do that increment at the bottom because that's going to happen automatically for us. So this is basically a syntactical sugar for this because this is very uh, verbose where we're able to get all of that in one pretty line here. <laughs> so generally I prefer for loops, but the purpose of them, they, they can do the same thing. But generally when you have something that's going to go on indefinitely until like the user says stop or something, I will use a while loop. If we have something that's going to go on a certain number of times, such as 10, I will use a for loop. That's just a personal preference, but I'm sure everyone out there has their own preference and everybody's right and according to their point of view. So that is your introduction to loops. Very, very fun. This allows us to create cool applications because we can make things happen more than once, essentially. So if you had any confusion, make sure you watch this video on loop, on repeat. <laughs> And then be sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video where we're going to code out some of these loops and it'll be a lot of fun. There's one more loop I forgot to tell you about which is the do while loop. The only thing that's different between a while loop and a do while loop is that the do while loop will always happen at least once. Where a while loop doesn't always necessarily have to happen. And we'll go over examples of those so don't worry about it. Thanks guys and I'll see you in the next one.